Welcome to Historia Spanarna, History Consens. This is the US Merchant Marine, unsung heroes of World War II. Before World War II, there were about 1,300 ships and 55,000 sailors in the US Merchant Marine. That is, all non-naval commercial US ships carrying cargo and passengers. By the end of the war, 1,500 ships had been sunk. Despite of that, the merchant fleet had expanded to more than 4,200 ships and 250,000 men. In 1941, USA was moving away from its non-interventionist and neutrality policies. The lend lease Act was signed in March that year. The US industries were gearing up. Goods and weapons were produced in ever-growing numbers. Trains, trucks and barges brought this aid to the US ports on the east and west coast. At first, consisting largely of food and industrial commodities, bound for England. Then tanks, planes, trucks, explosives and gasoline for the Allied countries fighting Germany and Japan. President Roosevelt said in a statement today that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii from the air. I repeat that, President Roosevelt says that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii from the air. This is CBS in America calling Honolulu. Go ahead, Honolulu. Go ahead, Honolulu. We went, they took us by bus to the Mississippi River and we got on the Liberty ship and then we found out why. They were loading 128 car loads of solid ammunition on that Liberty ship and they wanted no one to go and be able to battle it, I guess, to someone else. So it was for security reasons that we could not get off that ship. picked up a convoy of 68 ships and in 68 ships when you leave together they make kind of like a square and we got what they call the coffin corner the last one on the corner in case they hit us we wouldn't take too many other ships with us. In 1936 the American Merchant Marine Act was passed. The goal was to develop a US owned and operated merchant marine that could carry all domestic waterborne commerce, could carry a substantial portion of foreign commerce, and that could serve as a naval auxiliary in time of war or national emergency. The construction of 50 commercial merchant vessels was subsidized, tankers and merchant vessels, powered by steam turbines. The number was doubled in 1939 and again in 1940 to 200 ships a year. On September 27, 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt launched the first Liberty ship, SS Patrick Henry, at the yards of Bethlehem Steel, Baltimore, Maryland. On that day, 14 other merchant ships were launched in shipyards across the United States under the emergency shipbuilding program. President Roosevelt began saying, My fellow Americans, this is a memorable day in the history of American shipbuilding. A memorable day in the emergency defense of the nation. Today, from dawn to dark, 14 ships are being launched on the Atlantic, on the Pacific and on the Gulf, 
and among them is the first liberty ship, the Patrick Henry. And he ended, There shall be no death for America, for democracy, for freedom. There must be liberty, worldwide and eternal. That is our prayer, our pledge to all mankind. On the Liberty ship had those big pistons and there was old tiny steam engine was to put your hand in between there and see if it was hot. Every few minutes on all the cylinders you had to put your hand in between. And that wasn't no fun either. The burner you could get your hand pulled off or anything. And uh, anyway, I no more got to the gun and another torpedo hit in, uh, I, I believe in number two hatch up forward or the forecastle. And there was a lot of flames and flash from that. And then the ship started listening real bad to the starboard, which threw our, our guns and everything out of killer, especially the deck guns, you know, there are uh, five inch on uh, back aft. But it was dark, it was getting dark by then, and we couldn't see anything to shoot at anyway, you know. But we were on the guns ready to shoot if there was anything. And uh, like I say, the ship was listening real bad to the starboard. And uh, the captain ordered abandoned ship, so I ran to uh, a lifeboat station and helped build down the, the one of the big lifeboats. And uh, the men all clambered down the, the side into it, and uh, I got into it. And uh, there was a mate on there, and he said, uh, better man the oars, you know. And there was two men on one oar, they were great big long things, you know, it was about 30 men something like that in, in these boats and we were getting away from the ship in case it exploded or whatever. The American Merchant Marine carried 270 million tons of cargo loading an average of 4,000 tons every hour, day and night through the war. The merchant ships anchored of every beachhead, every atoll where supplies were needed. Trucks, tanks, guns, ammunition, jeeps, food, clothing and medical supplies. Normandy, North Africa, the Philippines, everywhere where supplies were needed. No invasion could have taken place without the merchant marines. The tankers didn't just carry gas and oil, but aircraft too. The work went on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Behind every beachhead were the merchant ships, fast passenger liners converted to carry troops. The American Merchant Marine carried 10 million men to the war and home again. Prior to World War II, the Japanese merchant fleet was the third largest in the world after Great Britain and USA. 6.3 million gross tons. 8 million gross tons were lost, including ships built during the war. The lifeline to the Japanese garrisons in the Pacific had been cut. Remaining was only 1.3 million gross tons, mostly poor standard and unseaworthy ships. The Japanese merchant marine was just a shadow of its former glory.
The Japanese have accepted our terms fully. That is the word we have just received from the White House in Washington, and I didn't expect to hear a celebration here in... You've heard it, ladies and gentlemen, and we're here in the Time Star newsroom with a traveling microphone. The war is over. The Japanese have surrendered. The victory has been won. It's official from the White House. You just heard Bob Trout. President Harry Truman has announced the end of the war. The Japanese have accepted our conditioned reply to their surrender offer. They will lay down their arms. There it is, the news you've been waiting for. It's over, all over. For some neighbors of yours and mine, the war ended long ago when the messenger arrived with the telegram saying killed in action or died of wounds. Let's have a thought to that tonight. The sounds of the guns have been stilled. This is August... The Merchant Marine returned to sea in brighter colors. Overnight, turning from shipping war supplies to relief. The casualty rate for these sailors was remarkably high. Estimates vary between 5 and 8,000 dead and more than 10,000 wounded. Proportionally, this casualty rate was as high or even higher than most of the uniformed military services. Despite their honorable and heroic service in wartime, the men of the U.S. Merchant Marine were not accorded veteran status. Not until 1988 were merchant mariners who served in World War II after a long struggle officially recognized as veterans. That's all folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.